I know. <laughs> now, who the hell are you people on the radio anyway? <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? All right. We don't know you to begin with from a hill of beans. <laughs> All we know, right, right, is your song's on the radio and everybody around you is saying it's a good song. Okay? Then why can't we sing it? And teach people how to sing it under fair use of copyright law. Okay? Why is it that only you can sing that one song? <laughs> and FBI is doing the copyright laws wrong on music because music is teachable too, right? <laughs> right. You can't separate lyrics from a song from poetry, right? <laughs> FBI. <laughs> They're the same thing. <laughs> They're under the same sappy idea. <laughs> You know what I mean in literature, right? <laughs> poems and lyrics go hand in hand. You might as well call poems lyrics and lyrics poems sometimes, depending on the length. Now, America, right, right, did a horse with no name, right? <laughs> in Tin Man, right? But some of the lyrics are nonsensical. In other words, what the hell they talk about at that point in the song, right? Someone talks about soap bubbles. What does that have to do with the Tin Man? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. <laughs> but that's what um, the critic meant. Right? So the, it, it don't even... Some of the words don't even fit with the song. Right? In that... Um, first you're talking about Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man. That he didn't, didn't already have. And cause there was a reason for the evening... Or the Tropic of Sir Galahad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what's the Tropic of Sir Galahad? Are you talking about the night? Sir Galahad? I've heard of him. <laughs> well, what does that mean? <laughs> what is the Tropic of Sir Galahad? Is that some kind of uh, tropical island? Or, you know, what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> what is the Tropic of Sir Galahad to begin with? <laughs> Okay, and we're supposed to understand, okay, <laughs> all of this too, right? Why can't we sing your song under educational purposes like other copyrighted material since it's lyrics? <laughs> and I thought music has an educational part as well, like science. <laughs> See, how can you teach science and it be copyrighted? Because it's a fact, <laughs> But in science, you got to list your source. The same way as if I sing someone else's song in copyright law for it to be fair use. Right? If I use someone's technique, right? Like my karate, for example. I tell you if I'm taking it from Cliff Yon, right? Who taught me his version of Shitaru, right? Versus, um, say... Uh, what's his name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fumio Demera. I'm probably wrong with his name, but it, his version, right? Or if I'm taking it from the book from Ashley, uh, what's his name, right? <laughs> and I say that's where I got the name from. <laughs> or like I told Ashley when I was talking about all this in my blog. I heard someone say right, on one of their videos that a real black belt has a white belt and they just don't take it off so it turns black <laughs> from yeast, right? Well, Vic um, okay, LaRue from the Karate Connection said that himself. Right? So I must have somehow heard about it even though I never took those videos myself, right? I never bought their video series until later on, right? But I didn't know that would be even on the brown belt section, right? <laughs> but it was, or the black belt, whichever one. <laughs> but Vic did say that. <laughs> Same way I did. <laughs> but I don't recall hearing that from Vic personally, or that it was related to his video, right? But if I did hear it through the grapevine, now I'm telling you it was Vic LaRue who said it, right? I didn't know that. 
So I'm giving him credit, right, for saying that. <laughs> now, if you're mad that Vic said that himself, he's a fifth degree black belt. You take it up with him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it. <laughs> it is. And I just kind of heard the same thing, right? That he said on the video. <laughs> Not necessarily knowing the source was Vic himself, right? But yeah, yeah, it turned out to be that Mick had said that too, right? <laughs> now, today I'm watching uh, MTV Live again, and all of a sudden this girl's calling herself Tina Shay. Well, that's not how I would pronounce her name. <laughs> it's Tina She. The reason it's Tina She is she's using a simple E, right? Not a E with a little French flair, <laughs> you know, a little mark at the end of it. Right now, my sister, for instance, her name is Renee, <laughs> but it's spelled with E, <laughs> not uh, no. <laughs> an E with the uh, French hat, <laughs> whatever you call it. Right, it's kind of like a apostrophe, right, right. at the end of the E. <laughs> Now, she's calling herself Tina Shea without the apostrophe E, right? <laughs> if you know what I mean, right? Itself, right? Now, I print... Now, it's that Tina Shea. <laughs> I'm just playing with her, but still. But still, right? If you understand, right? <laughs> she's calling herself Tina Shea, right? Or Shay, I'm sorry. And I would call her Tina She. <laughs> and it's emphasis on the Tina, <laughs> not Tina. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, you might can go even Tina, <laughs> even, right? And that would be more accurate depending on where you place the vowel point, right? Now, <laughs> do, do. <laughs> now, Tina, though, mm hmm. Or Tina, <laughs> Shay, right. or she, right, is her best thing with the English language itself. Because I don't know her. <laughs> Who the hell is she to say, call, change her name to Tina Shay? <laughs> what is Tina She to me? <laughs> hell with her truth. That's my truth. I call her Tina She. She needs to get used to it. Right. Right? <laughs> you see what I mean? Right. She's calling herself by the wrong name, in my opinion. <laughs> Not that I care or anything. <laughs> Just whenever I talk about her, I call her Tina She, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not Tina She. It's not spelled right to be Tina She. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like my name. I don't pronounce it. Shanae. <laughs> Though I could. <laughs> it ends with an E too. <laughs> but I don't call myself Shanae. <laughs> I'm Shane, right? <laughs> but it's even like Lizzo. I don't know who the hell Lizzo is. Nothing personal towards the woman, right? <laughs> I guess it's her name also. Elizabeth or something like that. Why, why did she call herself Lizzo? Because I don't know nothing about it, right? <laughs> See, when you put these people on the radio, what do you want me to say? <laughs> They're good singers. They're not bad. <laughs> None of them are bad. <laughs> but the problem is, when I hear them live <laughs> sometimes, right? They don't even sound like they sound like on the radio. <laughs> so then I think, well, maybe I need to teach them how to sing their own damn song because they don't sound like they sound like on the radio. <laughs> Which I'm trying to use fair use there. Because <laughs> music is teachable all forms. <laughs> even copyrighted musical can be taught. Right. Now the thing is, you're supposed to put a little cap on it, right? Say like 10% of the artist's material usually, right? But even then, that would cover one whole song. <laughs> usually anyway. Usually anyway. 
whether you buy it or not. <laughs> then you're putting it on the radio for free, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing a video, it can't be in the background. <laughs> no, I'm still doing something and the radio is playing the song free to the public, right? You can't have it both ways, FBI and co copyright holders, right? See, you're abusing copyright law then, right? You're not simply using it. You're abusing it to where no one can sing the song but the artist, but that's not what the law actually says. Mm -hmm. There's one circumstance that you can to teach the song under education purposes, right? Now, I thought to simply teach the song is you learn the lyrics to the song and you teach people how to sing it like the artist on the radio, <laughs> Am I wrong about that? Yes or no? Yes or no. If I'm coming, talking to you, FBI, <laughs> I'm talking to you about the law itself. You're not following correctly yourself. Right. If a person cannot correct you yourself, and you're an organization, right, with the law itself under fair use, and what it means to educate people in music, usually that means you're teaching someone to sing the damn song. <laughs> And that should be legally done. <laughs> Unless you're trying to cheat people and who can do it, too. Right. And then that's illegal. <laughs> right. That's a piece of copyright law. Mm -hmm. I know. Because you're not a singer, Mr. President, even if you were to sing. Right. Nor is Congress in the Senate. Right. If you fuck up a law. Mm-hmm. For music alone, right? and it's like written copyright laws, because right? it can be taught, the people have the right to say so. Right. Even if it's one person like me who likes singing any kind of music, right? even Christian songs, right, for example. Right. Though I'm not doing this religiously, more politically there, but, right, I guess. Right. See, if I'm separated by church and state, right? Mm -hmm. But that means there's the political shame and then there's the religious shame. So what you're wanting me to do is divide myself between the two. Right. Which that's hard to do as well, but okay, I'll attempt to. Right. Now, mm -hmm. the government is about following the rules but if we can't follow your rules because you're not following them right, you know, and that's what I'm saying you're doing, <laughs> you cannot say I'm wrong either <laughs> in wanting to teach music how you're supposed to teach music legally under fair use. Right. I'm not breaking the law. I'm, you can't even sue me over it <laughs> or anyone else for that matter. <laughs> Because they're teaching people to sing the song. <laughs> Which is the only way you can educate people with musical copyright law. Right. It's teach them how to sing the song. Right. You can't override that either. <laughs> and what it means legally. Right. Now, if I have a poem. I know. How do I teach you that poem? I read it to you. Right. And then I reflect on what I think the poem means. I can even do that with lyrics on the song, like I said. Right. I can also mm -hmm. teach you to sing the song two different ways or even three different ways. In your own voice, in the artist's voice, or even if I wanted to, in another artist's voice, like I did with ACDC. <laughs> I could do ACDC like C. Perry if I wanted to. Right. But again, it's not typically heard in C. Perry's style of voice, ACDC is it? But how would you do it? I don't know. You got to change it a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. Now, one of their most popular songs is you shook me all night long. Right. So how would I teach you how to sing it like Steve Perry, though? Right. 
from the original ACDC song. Well, I got to figure it out for myself, right? That's what makes it a lesson. Right. And then show you how to do it. Right. So, <clears throat> the first thing I got to show you is I can sound like ACDC in the first place when singing it. Right. And Bon Scott was the lead singer at the time. So, I, I mean, not Bon Scott. Bon Scott was no longer the lead singer at the time. But Brian Johnson was. <laughs> And again, <laughs> so I'll tell you that too, right, as educational part of copyright law, right? So this is a song, You Should Be Night All Night Long by ACDC, which is giving the band credit <laughs> for writing the song. The lead singer is Brian Johnson, right, who I'm going to teach you to impersonate right, right now. <laughs> And that makes it from me just simply singing the song to fair use. Right. She was a fast machine. She kept mother clean. Now, <laughs> I think I sounded like Brian Johnson. Do you think I sounded like Brian Johnson? Well, what I got to do, play the damn song. <laughs> Which, again, you act crazy about, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? But if you know the song and you heard it on the radio, that's the radio version of Ryan, Ryan Johnson's voice. I know. Right? Right. <laughs> on the radio. Right. Now, I'm not saying he might not sound different live. I ain't heard him live a lot. Seen that long. <laughs> I would have to look it up on YouTube or something. Right? But legally, oh no. okay, fair use in music covers teaching someone to sing the song, right? Just like when we're in band and we want to play a popular song, we learn to play it with our instruments, right? <laughs> and that's considered legally playing it in public right. under fair use too, right? It's why we, the bands can do that. Right. In public, too. Right. Now, you can also upload your practice on YouTube because you're teaching people to legitimately sing the song. Right. It's not in violation of copyright rules. Right. To do that. Right. Now, mm -hmm. The question is, how do I do it like Steve Perry, though? Right. Oh, the vibe machine's getting more clean. Well, now I'm slowing it down a little bit, if you know this, right? Mm -hmm. So, Steve Perry, though, sings kind of in a more higher pitch, more controlled voice other than, say, mm -hmm. Brian Johnson. He's got the rock and roll voice, right? As far as the hard rocker, like, let's give another example, Axl Rose. Now, it might be easier to teach you Axl Rose doing it than, say, Steve Perry anyway, but we're working on Steve Perry's voice, right? So we got to go to a Steve Perry song. You should be going, no, how I... Made you feel that should be gone. Mm -hmm. This is old Sherry <laughs> from uh, <clears throat> my TDs, right? <sighs> which you also heard on the radio by Steve Perry shortly after him and his band Journey had a little fallout, right? Now, the thing is, Steve Perry's voice in Brian Johnson's voice are so different. Right. <clears throat> but we're wanting to sing it for You Shouldn't Be All Night Long. And the opening lyrics is She was a fast machine. She kept her motor clean. She was the best damn woman that I ever seen. Right? right. So that's the opening lyrics there. Right. She was a fast machine. Yeah, mother queen. 
She was the best damn woman that I ever seen. Right? So I'm kind of trying to change my voice to kind of a cross between Stephen Perry's and Brian Johnson's. She was the best She had mother clean. She was the best damn woman that I ever seen. <laughs> you see what I'm doing there? Right. I'm slowly demonstrating that I'm changing my voice from Brian Johnson's voice right, to Steve Perry's voice from two different songs, right? But I'm only singing a small part of the song do so, right? Called the opening lyrics, right? Now, even under fair use, right? 10% of the material, <laughs> And it's not played on the radio, but it is, but it is. <laughs> Legally, there's some song of one song you can sing as well, even if it's a single. Usually, it's the length of the song that determines how much of the song you can use, and it's still 10%. If it's a three-minute song, how many seconds can you use? Eighteen. Mm -hmm. She was a fast machine. She kept her mother clean. She was the best damn woman that she ever seen. She had the same time telling me all around. Don't be out with those American thoughts. Okay. <laughs> Do you see them? Kind of changing it from, again, who? Right, into Stephen, into Stephen Perry's voice, right? She was a fast machine, she kept the mother clean. She was the best damn woman I've ever seen. She had the same desire, telling me no lies. Fucking me out with those fucking stars. Now, with Steve Perry's voice, though, and Brian Johnson's voice being in a different style of rock and roll, but even, right? So Steve is considered the more classical love rock star, right? Voice, right? Brian Johnson is more of a classical hard rock voice, right? Like even, uh, we can name a few others, for example, right? Um, like, mm, I forget. All right, I, I gotta remember the name too, um, we already named Axel Rose as one of them, right? So, um, uh, trying to think of the name there. <laughs> you know, similar, uh, genre. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Not quite Billy Squire, but. But Quiet Riot might be their lead singer. I forgot his name, right? Or the Scorpions' lead singer, right? We would put ACDC in that category of singing style. Mm -hmm. Or, say, well, the crew. Mm -hmm. Or Poison, maybe a little, right? So. For Every Rose Has a Thorn, which is more like Steve Top Perry, right? But it's kind of a bridge, right? Mm hmm. If you know what I mean, right? So, <clears throat> let's see. Mm hmm. She was a fast machine, she got blood like green. She was the best damn woman that I ever seen. She had a sad desire, telling me no lies. Knocking me out with those making lies. She told me to come, but I was already there. So we're trying to make it sound from Brian Johnson to Steve Perry, but with the same melody, right? 
Slow D for V. Let me just straighten it. Now you say on TV you want impersonators. I can impersonate. But what, you looking at my age? How old was Rich Little when he started right? to do impersonations? Mm -hmm. And I've been trying, though, since I was 30-some-odd years old, though, right? <laughs> now, I couldn't do so till YouTube came out, mm -hmm. which gives us a different way to use fair use and copyright law. I know. <laughs> Now we can openly critique right. something we buy from the store, right? <laughs> right? Or hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. Which before we couldn't do that. See, if I teach you how to sing the song from the radio, right. I can record it myself and again, right? Demonstrate how to do that without selling it. <laughs> mm hmm. Because, see, with fair use, it's not just about making money, right? It's also about teaching people something about music, right? As if most songs on the radio are free and to the public, right? You're changing the dynamic of the way the song can be heard, right? And who can hear it, right? But I'm not selling the song. You are. You are. <laughs> So you're trying to sell a song. Why, again, right, is singing, like you're trying to treat it, though, <laughs> different than reading a poem? <laughs> it ain't any different than reading a poem. <laughs> the difference is you're singing with your singing voice versus talking with your talking voice, which some people can impersonate other people's talking voices, right? That's another form of impersonation, right? Yes, how are you today? Now, maybe you recognize that voice from Sephardism. Maybe you don't. <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever watched that show? <laughs> Even? Even. <laughs> well, it's from that show. <laughs> it's from that show. <laughs> Whether you know it or not. <laughs> yes, I know. But I know, I know. I've seen a guy, I heard a guy on that show sound like that when he was speaking to uh, either Fred Sanford or the lot. <laughs> or Beth. Or both. <laughs> right. <laughs> and is that a crime? <laughs> no. <laughs> to impersonate someone's speaking voice? Right. Well, it's also not a crime to impersonate someone singing voice and teach legally under fair use how to sing their songs on the radio. Right. Now you can't. <laughs> See, when you're lying to me, I know, <laughs> about the law, <laughs> you're lying for the artist. <laughs> Who wants me to think I can't sing their song? Right. Which is bullshit. Anyone can sing a song. Right. In the first place. Right. Because that's how music works. Right. <laughs> now we're going to go back to which song? Where your bones. <laughs> Even Doja Cat sampled that. <laughs> how about that? Doja Cat. <laughs> But do I care? No. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. But we're going to the old classic row, row, row your boat. Right. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Now, I can't do multiple voices with that unless, again, I have a way to record that way. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but every time I sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat <laughs> from my voice, <laughs> if I want you to recognize the song I'm singing, I'm going to say the title, which is Row, Row, Row Your Boat, <laughs> and sing it for you how I say it does sit. Right? 
Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Not only should you recognize that as the song Row, Row, Row Your Boat, I also, I believe, sung the notes in the phrases correctly, <laughs> legally, for that song. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Right. And that's why you can sing copyrighted material. Right. Okay, FBI? Mm-hmm.